Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on Super Carlin Gaming, guys. My name is Tyler Carlin, so if you're wondering why I don't sound like Jonathan and Ben, it's because I'm not Jonathan and Ben. I am their little brother, Tyler, and I am playing through Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which is one of my favorite games from my childhood. It did come out 12 years ago, I think, when I was, like, uh, a little preteen. So, I'm going to play through this game, and I'm going to hope that you guys watch and enjoy it. This is my very first expedition into the Super Carlin Brothers world um, on my own. You know, I'm filming and editing this by myself, so I feel like I'm excited, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we have ahead of us, guys. So, the first thing you do in this game is you choose your class, and there's all these different classes, and if you read online, there's all these reasons why you should choose a soldier, or why you should choose a scout, or why you should choose a scoundrel. And all the reasons why they're the best ones. Um, but the reasons I'm going to give is for choosing what I'm going to choose, which is going to be the scout, um, is that the scoundrel here is skillful in stealth, which is only really a useful skill at like one point in the entire game. Now, if you have other ex examples where you use the stealth feature, then go right ahead and tell me wrong. But I have only ever found that it's useful like right at the beginning. Um, so I don't really think the scoundrel is a very useful character. And then the soldier has no equal in combat, but I've found that as long as you put points into strength, then you have no equal in combat. Like, that doesn't seem like a very useful starting point. And the bonus that the soldier does get that the other characters don't is that it can wear heavy armor. But when you become a Jedi, you can only wear robes, which are not armor. I think they, they might be light armor classification, but everyone can wear that. Um, so I'm going to go with the Scout because, honestly, I just kind of like the body shape the best. It seems the most natural. <laughs> um, so we're going to do a custom character because, obviously, um, I'm going to choose... I've got a favorite one. Uh, this one. I like this one the best because he's got a little bit of gray hair. And I think that makes him ju look just a little bit more intelligent than the other ones. And that's important to me because we're not actually going to give him much intelligence. So after that, you come to the attribute screen where you've got all these options to put points into things. And we are going to just go ahead and straight up max out strength. Because what strength does is makes it easier for you to hit things with your sword. And in this game, you can go with a sword or a blaster. And if you pick up a blaster and you're like, wow, this is a really nice blaster, I'm going to use this. Don't, because you're going to get a lightsaber in this game. Like, that is something that will definitely guaranteed happen. And you want to be a Jedi, because you watched Star Wars like me when you were a child, and were like, man, Jedi are awesome. So just ignore dexterity completely, because you can have... Dexterity um, makes it easier to hit things with blasters and grenades, but likely you will have somebody on your team that has high dexterity, and a well-rounded character is just a waste of time. So we don't need that. We can just ignore dexterity. The Constitution is actually what we're also going to put a lot of points in. Um, because Constitution adds vitality points. And ever since I played Diablo with Ben, I know that all you need in any video game is the most health. Because the best defense is more health than anyone else. So we're just going to go ahead and put as many points into Constitution as possible. Because we don't want to ever die. That is the goal. Um, so... And intelligence seems like a useful skill. Um, every time I play this game, I put points in it, I feel like. But I also feel like it never makes a notice noticeable difference for me. So I'm just going to ignore intelligence right now. Um, and let's see. Wisdom represents willpower and perception. A high wizard. So Jedi force points and force power saving throws. Force powers of Jedi. So, so wisdom seems pretty important. And we want to go ahead and start just, just one point in there. Because we want to make sure that our Jedi character is able to kill things. And then, last thing we've got here is personality and leadership. Um, I, I, this seems like it's really good for persuasion. But, like, persuasion is only sort of useful. Because you can always get what you want in this game if you just click the right buttons. So we're going to go ahead and skip the charisma. And we're going to go with strength, constitution, and wisdom. We're going to ignore dexterity and intelligence. Because well-grounded characters are a waste of time. So now we're going to go ahead and go into our skills. And they've got a bunch of really cool skills in here. Um, where, like, computer use makes it easier to, like, hack computers, which is useful. But it is not as useful as repair, which makes you repair droids that can then kill things for you. 
Um, so I like to choose either between computer use and repair and max one of them. And I'm going to do repair this time around. Um, and then you have all these other options, like demolitions makes it, makes it easier for you to you know disarm mines and place mines and use grenades and how much damage they do. Um, and that one's pretty useful and I will likely have somebody on my team who I keep as a super demolitions expert. Another option is stealth, which I don't think really does anything, because in order to use stealth you have to go solo mode, and by yourself you are always 100% worse off. Um, awareness is pretty useful, it lets you notice, uh, awareness is useful in generally every RPG, it lets you notice uh, mines that are nearby, but again I will have a demolitions expert on my team, so I'm, not, I'm just going to completely ignore demolitions and awareness. Uh, persuade is actually probably one of the most useful skills because uh, you, you know you get more options in dialogue and then you can make people do things but it's not as useful as repair um, and then security I'll have a security expert on my team it helps you open certain doors and things but you can always get through the game is not gonna make it so that you can't beat the game so you just gotta think critically and the last one of the most important skill is treat injury and this makes med packs cure skills everything more effective for this character so you always again like the key to never dying is to just have so much health you can't die so we're just going to go ahead and put points in treat injury now feats feats is um like basically your skills uh and i always recommend uh the only physical skill you need is this flurry skill right here um which it comes with um, and then it, got all, it has all these proficiencies like blaster rifle proficiency and blaster right, pistol or proficiency, heavy guns proficiency, and melee weapons proficiency, which is what we want to go ahead and do. So we're just going to add to melee weapons and click OK. And now we need a name. Jacob Chan? I don't think so. I'm no Jacob Chan. Not, not me, not ever. No way. Uh, Tyler, no. Um, I know. Perfect. Peaches McLean. Jedi Master Peaches McLean. Ready to rock some stuff. Alright. I'm pretty happy with our character. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. We're going to go ahead and play. So Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic takes place like a long time before the Republic we know about. Um, that's why it's called the Old Republic. And then the movies, I think there's the New Republic. Um, basically, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, um, there's this beautiful big Star Wars sign in space that was built by the Republic, and uh, as it just floats through space, it tows with it these words, and um, they're really far away, but the words say, Knights of the Old Republic, very slowly. 4,000 years before the rise of the Galactic Empire, the Republic verges on the collapse. Darth Malak, last surviving apprentice of the Dark Lord Revan, has unleashed an invincible Sith armada upon an unsuspecting galaxy. Crushing all resistance, Malak's war of conquest has left the Jedi Order scattered and vulnerable. As countless knights fall in battle, and many more swear allegiance to the new Sith Master. In the skies above the Outer Rim world of Terrace, a Jedi battle fleet engages the forces of Darth Malak in a desperate effort to halt the Sith's galactic domination. And that is where our story picks up in that world of galactic domination. It takes like forever. Slowly pan down. Here we are on the city world of Terrace, which to me seems like a cop out and looks just like Coruscant. But I didn't say that, and I'm not criticizing. Now right here we've got one of our very favorite ultra high definition scenes in the game, which are very rare and you know they must be important. Because this was originally released on the Xbox, not like the Xbox 360 or the Xbox One, but like the Xbox One, which was really just called Xbox. Um, and I remember it's just the greatest game ever. So, so as we're being attacked, I'm here taking a nap because what else would Peaches McLean be doing? Taking a nap. Looks like I'm even having a bad dream, and then I wake up. Um, and I get, a, oh crap, we're being, oh no, oh no, oh no. <gasps> I look like a, uh, like I just took my stormtrooper helmet off. Uh, and then this guy shows up. And our spire is under attack. We don't have much time, blah, blah, blah. Who are you? I'm going to say this is Trask Olgo. And they actually give him like a ton of backstory, which is 
a little too much because, spoiler alert, he's not going to make it even to the end of this episode. Um, so we're looking for Bastila, who is this uh, commanding officer. She is uh, like the woman, the, the person in charge. And our job is to go find her. So we're going to go do that. And he makes fun of me and calls me a scout, not a soldier. Um, but excuse me, bruh, I've got wicked strength. So let's go help Bastila. All right. I'll also have you know that I'm not just any scout. I am a Peaches McLean Dreadnought Scout. I made it all the way through. So here we go. I've got some cool stuff. So I'm going to get my items and then uh, some experience for opening boxes because that's what experience is all about. And I'm going to go ahead and equip my stuff. Um, you have the choice at the beginning of the game between a short sword and a blaster pistol. I am going to go with the short sword because I want to be a melee character. Um, and now I've got clothes which just look dang good. Look at me. Whew, I look like I like like Han Solo. Um, so yeah, um, that is what I am working on right now. We're gonna move out. Trask joins my party. Uh, I'm gonna set him up, and then I have to unlock this door. So I have to switch to Trask, unlock the door. And the door's open. Door's open, better leave again. Alright, Peaches, let's go. Come on, Peaches McLean. What? I don't like that the game says, like, you should switch back to Peaches leading. And then, like, it switches automatically for you. Oh, God, Cartho Nassie. Oh, my God, this guy is so annoying. Oh, my gosh. Cartho, he's so important. Yeah, Cartho is a hero. Cartho, you blaster pistols. Cartho is great. Cartho has his own blaster. Karth is like the most annoying character in the whole game. The door's, the door's locked. Okay, blah, blah, blah. What I have to do is... Uh, because I've played this game a million times, I'm sort of blowing through this part. Um, we open this door and everybody dies the exact same way in this game. Even though there's all this immense dialogue, they all... Oh, oh, every single one of them. What do you mean, must be the advanced boarding party? Didn't you just get me because you knew that we were being boarded? Whatever. Uh... I love the computer version of this game because you can press buttons and things happen. Uh, so I'm just going to flurry all over these guys, and Trask is going to get in my way, which is odd. Uh, that won't be our last with the Sith. Obviously, won't be our last battle with the Sith. Didn't you just come get me out of bed to like be like, oh hey, we gotta fight the Sith? There's some very like extreme exposition in this game where it just drills into you like, hey, bad things are happening. Let's go do things. In case you forgot, bad things are happening, let's go do things. So, yeah, you know, but that's okay. Uh, I don't know how Why do I have an advanced med pack? But I'm gonna use it. Look at me, full health. Um, so, yeah, we're just basically killing the Sith and going around. Ooh, look, a longsword. So now we're going to start what is going to be the future of Peaches McLean. Two weapon assault. Um, so Peaches is going to. He's going to use two swords because dual wielding was always cooler than like one weapon. Like, as everybody knows, like, uh, Ayla Sakura was way cooler than everybody else. And like, everybody's favorite scene in the movie that came out right before this game was when Anakin uses two lightsabers to fight Count Dooku. So we're going to go with two swords. Uh, my men are getting killed. That's the Republic. That's the Sith. You can't see me pointing, but I promise my hands are pointing at things. And now they introduce grenades with this lovely exposition where that guy kills his own teammate. And we're going to go pick up some more. I'm just going to throw a grenade because that seems like it's going to work. And let's see. Boom! Direct one of them. And then we're going to flurry all over these guys because that is the only attack we're using. Ah! Pause again. Okay, okay. Throw an egg. Back. Everybody just dies, like, so similar. Oh! Oh! It doesn't sound like they're dying. It sounds almost like they enjoy it. You know what I mean? Um, but Peaches McLean does not mess around. And we're just picking up all this stuff because they've got grenades and stuff. And I know I didn't put any points in demolitions, but as you've seen so far, I don't think I really needed to. Um... Oh, a repair kit. That is going to be so useful for me with all my droid characters I have right now. Um, uh, oh, you guys hear that? Lightsabers. 
So this game loves to tease you. Uh, we're gonna open this door, and as you'll see, there's lightsabers, and it's like, oh man, Star Wars game, and like the first scene, there's lightsabers. Maybe I'll get one, but you don't. You do not get one here. Nope. You at most get maybe like a upgrade for a lightsaber later on. Later on, but but not right here. No lightsaber for you. I don't like that that he swears right there because they made this game rated teen for what I feel like no reason. Like, yeah, there's a lot of violence and stuff. So maybe they were like, you know what, it's rated teen, we can just put whatever we want. But look, study the remains of this. And we get a vibration cell, which is an upgrade for uh, lightsaber later on. So we're just going to keep searching the remains of these guys and keep picking up items. And that's not a door. That's not a door. That doesn't even have a thing on the map. I don't know why that's there at all. It's not like you could have ever gone in that room. Because that room doesn't exist. So we're going to go ahead and med pack up. Because it looks like we're dying. Oh, look. Oh, that was only eight health it repaired. I have such little health. Um, you'll find the Republic soldiers are fairly useless. Because I just woke from, like, sleeping. And I am having much more success killing these guys than my Republic soldiers are. Um, but that's okay. Ooh, I didn't really notice this backpack. I see Blaster pistol. I don't need a blaster pistol. Um, but I do like. I like the idea of a blaster character. A lot of people play this game. They do like just Jedi, but I don't like that. I like to have people that shoot things and that can save me from a distance. Um, although you do run into problems where like, I almost want a character that's physical and close that uses like swords. Like that isn't a Jedi because then they have the armor. Oh, I leveled up. Oh, cool. Level up. Um, so, like, the weird thing about this game is they don't always give you, like, I don't get attributes this time, and I don't get, um, whatever's down here. I think this is force powers. So I only get skills, and I'm going to put them in repair and treat injury, like I always do, because well-rounded characters are stupid. Say it with me, class. And then, look, the very first thing is, like, two-weapon fighting. So, the, obviously, they want you to do two-weapon fighting. Like, that's gotta be the reason, because they're not in alphabetical order. They, look, it's like, T, A, C, uh, C... E, oh, maybe they do go in the F. Oh. Oh, no, 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 They're not in order. Okay. I don't know what the order is. Well, we're going to keep working on that. So instead of going for, like, the, um, like, traditional approach with using, like, all sorts of fancy attacks and stuff, I'm going to do all the boring things because that works better. And here, we learned so much about you, Trask Olgo, and now, we're gonna open this door, and you're gonna go die. So, I don't know why we ever cared about you. I also don't know where you got a sword, because I didn't give you one, you had a gun. And I checked your inventory one time when I played this, and all you have is a gun and clothing. So, Trask Olgo is dead. As will soon be revealed by the world's worst character. Um, but let's see if there's any stuff around here. I think these dead guys look like Batman. They're just kind of scattered all over the place. Um, so we're going to go to the starboard section. Um, and they built this whole ship, and it's super fun. And this game, like, it's a lot of math, if you want to think. Karth, shut up! Oh my gosh, Karth. I have a camera to you, it looks like. Why don't you... Like, I don't understand why I can see him. Where is this? Oh, gosh, okay, Karth. I'll get to the escape pods. I'll do it. Um, I'm gonna throw a grenade first. BOOM! So yeah, Karth is super annoying, but we've got two weapon fighting now, now I never miss. Yeah, like I was saying, there's a lot of math that goes into this game, like saving rolls and all these things, and I don't know what any of that means. All I know is I press flurry and then things die. And that has always worked for me, so that's what I'm gonna keep doing. Um, yeah, so that's... That's basically what's up. So now Karth is going to talk to me all about how I could, like, kill the squad of Sith Troopers. And I can either use Repair, which is the super great skill, or Computer Use, which is the super stupid skill, and kill all of them. And I'm going to use Repair. We're going to repair that droid, and we're going to wreck some little children. Um, because Peach and McLean doesn't mess around. So there's this combat droid here. Reactivate it. We're going to activate its shields. Activate it in control mode. And then a lot of times the droid will be like, do you want to activate its targeting system? Which makes you think, like, oh, I need to use this targeting system in order for this thing to kill things. But you don't. You just need control mode. It'll kill anyway. Just watch. Ugh, ugh. Look. Two dead. Three dead. Four dead. 
five dead. Uh, wreck. You go, combat droid. Look at that swag of walk. Swag, 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 swag. Um, so basically, I think through this door is where I find Karth, and, um, and I find a prototype Bible Blade right here, which is a cool weapon. You can upgrade that later on, so we're going to go ahead and equip that, um, instead of this short sword. Go with the Viber Blade, and now you can see I do 6 to 15 damage, which is a lot, since I only have 24 health. Um, so if that just kind of gives you a frame of reference for how much I can do. So, we're going to go through this door, and yes, there is Karth Onassi, who has just been sitting there behind that door. And Karth Onassi is like a known Republic slaughterer, and he could have killed all those guys. But no. So how do I know I can trust you, Karth? The soldier of the Republic. And you are a soldier that didn't kill anything when you could have helped me out. You could have been like, oh, hold on. You can either activate that, activate that, or I can help you out. But instead, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, he just revered with the only two ones alive on the ship, which means that... Either Trask Ogo was betraying me, which I think is totally a conspiracy, or, uh, I don't know why he'd do that, or Karth, uh, knows that Trask is dead, and it's just like, hey, that guy you've been fighting through the galaxy with, that guy is dead, and so we're just gonna be sad for a moment. But then this, I think, is the funniest part of the game. You can get on the escape pod, and it's like, do you want to get on the escape pod, or do you want to step away? As though, like, Karth didn't just tell us that we have to get on the escape pod to leave. So we're going to get on the escape pod, and that is going to be the end of our first episode here. Um, right now, we're just flying to Terrace um, in this moderately HD scene. I think this one is a little lower quality than the last one. We're going to go to Terrace, and we're going to crash into the Undercity. And um, then I'm going to have these bad dreams where I see Bastila. Um, and you think to yourself, maybe I'm Bastila, you know, like maybe that's why we were, I was so important and they went through some random procedure and now I'm not Bastila anymore, but, uh, I don't know, because like why would I dream about Bastila and this bad guy, like it doesn't make any sense, uh, but, so that, that was my whole dream where I had this vision, but apparently I was knocked out for a few days, which I feel like if a few days is real, then like, I don't know. I feel like my dreams last longer than that dream, and I know human dreams don't last very long. So, that's all I'm trying to say. But anyway, Karth is like, wakes me up, and he's like, good to see you awake, blah blah blah, you've been having a bad day, and I'm like, well, I'm Peaches McLean, how do we get out of here? Um, I'm in class, okay, we're in an abandoned apartment, blah blah blah, They're trying to get me away from the crash fight, uh, I guess, I, I mean... Are we just gonna wait for the Republic to rescue us? Um. So yeah, I know who Bastila is. I also hate Bastila. Bastila, like Karth, is like the stupidest character. Um. So, yeah, let's. I mean, we're gonna go ahead and start looking for Bastila. Um. We're gonna scout the planet out. I really just hate this dialogue because there's nothing that can happen here. So, one of the coolest things about this game is that it was the first game, maybe not the first, but one of the first games to introduce the idea that you can make decisions that will affect whether you are a light character or a dark character, and your decisions like affect how the game is played. So what I want to know, I've played both sides and I like both sides, what I want to know from you guys in the towel section below is if I should be going with the dark side or the light side. Um, primarily the difference is with your force powers. Or if you're a dark po dark side character, you do mean things to people, and then you get dark side points, and then you, you're like, force lightning costs less force. But if you go light side, then you are, like, a nice character, and sometimes you have to do things for the benefit of others, but always really for the benefit of yourself. Like, no matter what, you're a selfish character. Um, so do I want to go light side or dark side? I want you guys to decide. I don't care which one. Whatever you decide, I will do wholeheartedly. Um, and that is all I have for this first episode. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed, and I hope you come back and watch again. Um, I've had a lot of fun filming it, and I'm really excited about this adventure in the Super Carlin Brothers world. Peaches McLean, signing out.